Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, this is Jeffrey with the Christian Overwatch and today we're going to be talking about evolution. Now before we get into it we need to define what we're talking about. There are six major subsets of evolution, all of which would need to happen for evolution, to, the evolution theory to hold any amount of water. First you would need cosmic evolution. This is the Big Bang, um, the origin of time, space, and matter. Uh, you need all three to happen at once. Uh, if you had time and matter but no space, where would you put it? If you had space and matter but no time, when would you put it? All three have to come together at the same point in time. Um, then you would need chemical evolution. They say hydrogen and other simple elements were produced in the Big Bang. How do you get all of the other elements? You can't fuse past iron. How do you get past, how do you get all the other elements? Stellar and planetary evolution. The Big Bang throws a bunch of dust out into the universe. How does that turn into planets and stars and meteors and comets and all that we see out there in, in the solar systems? Uh, you would need organic evolution. You have a bunch of planets floating around now. How do you get life to evolve on those planets? How do you get life from non-life? You would need, need macro evolution. This is, you have your single-celled organism on your planet now. How do you get that to turn into all of the life we see today? Okay, then you have micro evolution. Micro evolution, I do not like the term. Uh, it is more accurately defined as a change within kinds. Um, it, it's not technically evolution. Um, this is where you have a bunch of different varieties of dogs, um, where you can selectively breed dogs and get a different sort of dog. However, it is still a dog. Um, it did not gain anything that it had before. In, in fact, most of the time it's a loss of information. Uh, to go from a wolf to a chihuahua is a definite loss of information. You didn't get anything new and fancy with a chihuahua. Uh, so these are our terms. Uh, uh, Microevolution is scientific, and what I mean by scientific is it's uh, observable, it's repeatable, and it's testable. We can see it happen. We know it happens. It's testable. You can do it multiple times and get the same result. Um, so it's observable. It's testable, it's repeatable, we know it happens. Um, the rest of these five do not fit those. You, they, it, none of these have been observed. None of these you cannot test to prove that, or find evidence that these have happened. That you can't test that. Um, and good luck trying to repeat it. Um, let's move on. Um, there are many arguments arguments for evolution, um, especially and but a lot of them in textbooks ha are proven lies. Uh, the evolution of horses. Uh, this diagram was proven wrong many years ago. Um, uh, the embryology uh, drawings by uh, Ernst Haeckel uh, were were proven wrong in 1875 still in textbooks today. These are the actual animals. Uh, these are his drawings. He thought Darwin's uh, uh, ideas were great if only someone could find some evidence, so he decided he'd make some. Proven wrong in 1875. Um, one of the biggest um, thorns in the side of evolution, I believe, is um, petrified trees standing up through multiple rock layers. They claim all these layers are millions of years apart. Um, in fact, this tree, the bottom here is colified, um, and the top here is petrified. Um, and they say this takes millions of years to happen. Well, that tree stand there for millions of years while it waited for the bottom of it to turn into coal, and then the rest of this to sediment to pile up around it? I don't think so. Either that, or it had to grow through, like, what is that, like, 80 feet of solid rock? Yeah, unlikely. So, 
there's not really any good evidence for evolution. And now I know people are going to criticize me like, oh, you only pick the ones that are proven lies. None of them, none of the arguments for evolution make make sense, <laughs> are, are, are fact. Um, I, you name any of them, that, that none of them are more than uh, microevolution, if best. If anything else, it's a fabrication. Um, so I'm not going to get into that right now. So let's move on. So how does it work? Um, we're going to be talking about macro evolution. We're just going to jump back. Macro evolution is where we've already had life evolve. We're going to give evolution the benefit of the doubt and say that the rest of these four right here, they've already happened. Okay. So once you have a simple thing, we're just going to try to see will macro evolution even work. We're not even going to get into the rest of them. How life could happen from non-life. We're gonna let we're gonna give them a free ride on that one. We're just gonna say, all right, life's already here, all right? We see that life's already here. Is it evolving? We're just gonna ask the simple question: Is it becoming more evolved? Okay. So let's define what that means. Okay. That means a little bit of information to a lot of information. Okay. You're increasing information, right? Little bit to a lot. Makes sense. That's what we're talking about with macroevolution, small amount of information to a large amount of information. Now that can happen one of two ways. It can happen quickly or it can happen slowly. All right? You with me so far? All right. Now, here's where we really get into the nitty-gritty of things. Okay. A. Well, first, before A, we need to understand that DNA is breaking down. Okay, if you make a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, the, your your final copy is not going to look as good as your original. It's just it's not. And that's what we're doing with DNA. You have mommy and daddy, and then a baby, and the baby has uh, the baby's DNA is a copy of both the mother and the father, and it passes its genes on, and it's a copy of the copy, and you just keep going, going, going the DNA starts to break down, it starts to lose its integrity, it starts to fall apart. All right, we know this happens, all right? So, to evolve, DNA must become more complex. All right, we've already established that. that. It also must gain new information. All right, makes sense. Um, it must become more complex and it must gain new information. Now, here's the tricky bit. It must gain the information faster than it loses the information. Hmm. This is if it happens slowly. Okay. So the pro problem we have here is that pretend that macroevolution is, is is a bucket. Okay. We've got a bucket of water. We've got a hole inside of this bucket. Okay. The hole represents the loss of, of genetic information. Okay, the DNA breaking down. Okay, that's that's losing genetic information, so the water level is going down. Okay, so if you want something to become more evolved or more water to be in the bucket, more information or more water must be added faster than it's leaking out. Okay, that should be seen. Okay, we see it breaking down. We see it, us. We see the loss of information. However, we don't see the increase of information. And in fact, for evolution to work, it Right here, it ha would have to happen faster than it's lost. Okay. However, we do not see a slow incremental increase of information. It's not observed. We've never seen it. Okay. So because it's not observed, it's not testable. It's not repeatable. It's not science. Now, evolution evolutionists are going to jump in here and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. We've seen new information be added into bacteria, and I could go on for hours on the studies that they like to bring up on that. And there are some where new information was kind of added. It was the same amount of information, so don't get me even started on that. But the problem is that even if you can prove that new information was added into the genetic code, it still would have to be added faster than it's lost, which isn't proven. In fact, you should see it all the time, but you don't. Okay? So if it doesn't happen slowly, I mean, if it doesn't happen slowly, right? Like gradually over time, it must happen quickly. 
right? That's our only alternative, slowly or quickly, or not at all, really. Um, so let's. So if it doesn't happen slowly, it must happen quickly. That would mean, actually, that if we read here, f fast increase of information would require repeated extinctions. It would. Picture, picture a scenario. You have a population of a million horses. Okay, got a lot of them. Now, one of these horses evolves. It doesn't become a stronger horse. It becomes something completely different. Okay, it has, it, it develops wings. Okay, it's now a Pegasus. Okay, has wings. That's something new that it didn't have before. That would be evolution. Okay, now. If everything continues on the way it was going, that horse is going to get married with another horse, and it's going to have little baby horses, and that baby horse is going to have half of its father's DNA and half of its mother's DNA, so it may or may not have wings, and they may or may not be the same size, and then it's going to pass its genetic information on, so its child is only going to be a quarter Pegasus, and the farther along you go, the less and less Pegasus is actually in the horse population, and it's just going to be bled back into the genetic information and be lost. So to overcome that, what would have to happen is that every, all but like two horses, one being a Pegasus actually, would have to die so therefore the genetic information could continue, but it's still going to be watered down a little bit because you only have the one that evolved. Okay. And this would have to happen every single time there was a new evolutionary step. Okay, So if you think about the differences between two animals, like a dinosaur and a horse, um, the amount of genetic differences, each time some ch a change happened, the rest of the population would have to die, which would be a freak occurrence, it would be a roll of the dice, and that doesn't make sense. The odds of that happening would be astronomical, and the evidence would be just everywhere. Now, the, the chances of things fossilizing are fairly low, okay? Um, millions of buffalo were killed out west, but not very many of those got fossilized, if any, really, because they kind of just were rotted out in the prairie. Okay. However, you are going to find some evidence if that many animals die all at once, and all of them would have to die repeatedly to go from a dinosaur to a bird, and that's just one change. They're claiming that we came from a single-celled organism to all that we have now. That's a lot of changes. That would require a lot of mass extinction, which we don't see evidence for. We see a lot of evidence for extinction, but not that much. Like, good heavens, we don't see that much. So that one doesn't work. That one doesn't hold up to scrutiny, does it? So if it doesn't happen slowly, and it doesn't happen quickly, one must beg the question if it happens at all. Okay. Now you can argue your points of, oh, I've, oh, this has been, they, they've proven this with this and this with that. But if the fundamentals of it, of, of just what we're talking about, if you really break down to the nitty gritty of, can the information be added slowly or can it be? App be added quickly, can, can it even be added at all, when you really break down, it can't happen at all. So my last point here, if you see, evolution falls apart when put to the simplest scientific inspection. It, it really does. So I hope this video was encouraging and informative and you kind of get a better understanding of what we're working with here when we're talking about evolution. Um, and uh, don't get muddled up in terms. Really think about it and what the, we're talking about in the in the really core of of things. And so, uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm running out of time, but um, I really appreciate you watching. So, yeah, take care. Have a great day.